Hey, it's mRandom101, and today I have another art book haul. This time around, it's actually two art books from the Loop on the Third Animus series, which has very quickly just become one of my all time favorite anime, manga franchises, just franchises in general. I love Loop on the Third so much, and I'm very happy and excited to own these two art books. Basically, what happened as soon as I found out these two existed, I bought them. I was browsing around on Amazon Japan and I kind of had the thought, wait, there should be art books for Lupin, right? And to my surprise, these two beauties were still in stock, brand new, and things kind of just worked out perfectly for me because these two right here are just two of my favorite, just absolute favorite parts or pieces from the anime Lupin series. So I am very happy that these actually have art books. And there is also one of these for part five in the same style. And there is an even older one for the woman called Fujiko Mine series, but that one's like hard to get. It's out of stock, out of print. Maybe I'll put in some pictures in the, just on the video and just some links in the description for reference if you're interested. Also for these two art books, I will just link information for them if you want to get them. Oh yeah, and as a side note, as I mentioned, I got these from Amazon Japan. I got these two art books and another one, which I will show off at some point on the channel. And they packaged it so terribly, like it was a very thin, flimsy, kind of like cardboard envelope, not even like a box. I will put some pictures on the screen if I still have any, hopefully. And the package when it arrived it was like almost completely ripped apart i'm not sure if the pictures i have show it off properly but just wow thankfully nothing was ripped nothing was like bent terribly out of shape so i don't really mind it's kind of like scuffed around and whatever but again i don't really mind so this was just kind of a heads up maybe you should not order our books from amazon let's see maybe just put in some other stuff in the order and hopefully they send your stuff in a box because you might have an unpleasant surprise, and we don't want that. All right, I also wanted to give some quick shout outs to just two of my favorite YouTube channels out there. And what's really awesome, they occasionally make Lupin related videos. And not only that, these channels will offer a range of really creative, fun, and exciting videos related to anime stuff. So definitely check these channels out if you're curious. and. I will put like the names of the channels on the video and also I will link everything in the description. First I'll start off with AMV Senate, which yes is basically an AMV channel. And what I really like about the AMVs from the channel, especially the Lupin ones for example, the appeal of the specific part or movie that is covered is just brought out so nicely and the editing is always just so on point together with the just fantastic music choice. And yeah, if you want to just kind of get a basic idea of the specific appeal of a series or the appeal of one of these like loop on parts, then definitely check out those videos. I will link in the description the AMVs related to Jigen's um, tombstone or gravestone and to loop on part four. I really like those AMVs and I constantly go back to rewatch them. And next up, we have Val from Val K Inc. I just love how chill and relaxed and fun her channel is to watch. She posts these really awesome creative videos. Like for example, I was kind of like just mind blown by a project that she did where she customized one of her jackets and made it a loop on the third jacket and she just draws everything on there and it looks so good and amazing and what do you know it's also glow in the dark so just mind blown again and i love it whenever she draws something and it's typically like a character that i like or care for so yeah that's fun plus she also posts haul videos for whatever she is collecting and she collects a lot of just really cool stuff so big shout outs to her channel as well and of course everything is going to be linked in the description i will also link the jacket video that she made and she also actually posted a loop on the third haul fairly recently so also make sure to check that out okay now moving back to the books themselves on the bottom here 
in this really just awesome silver ink finish. We have the art book for Lupin III Jigen's Gravestone, which is a movie slash OVA, whatever. This was 4,000 yen, and the other one also cost the same. Here we have the art book for the TV series Lupin III Part 4, Italian Adventures. This one again, also 4,000 yen. I'm just showing this off for the ISBN, which I guess I'll link in the description as well. And now it's time to dive a little bit more deeply into the art books. I will start off with the one for Jigen's Gravestone. You have this really nice silver finish for the ink on this black background and this amazing keyframe was selected from the movie as the cover. I can see why this was the specific choice. It just looks really good. Then underneath you have the exact same keyframe, but you can see the details a little bit better. Here is like a closer view. On the back, it's just the logo. When you open the art book, you have just a really iconic scene from the movie, and I really love it and appreciate it when art books have this small detail and they include something that leaves like a strong visual impact in the beginning of the art book. And it basically just sets the tone for what you can expect from not only the movie itself, but also for the art book. So I really like details like this one. Then you have various interviews with staff members and the director. This book has over 300 illustrations with just, uh, let's see, Genga slash keyframes, key drawings. Here is like a screenshot for what the final product looks like. And you have kind of like an in-between with selected frames. I really just love the aesthetic and visual concept behind this interpretation of the Lupin series. It's just so good looking. The designs are so like sharp and badass and memorable. Everyone looks so striking, like the main cast especially. My goodness. Okay. And let's see. You have Jigen looking very hot. Jigen is just like a top tier husbando for me. I love him so much. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in anime and manga in general, and with this design, like, wow, he just looks even cooler than usual. All right. Beautiful. Love this. More interview stuff. This is published in a A4 format, but you know, it's um, in landscape, so it's kind of hard to flip through this. So I have to just do it like this so I can show off the details a little bit better. All right. Well, since we're on the Fujiko page, this movie is part of like a series of movies that are sequels to the TV anime for a woman named Fujiko Mina from just the Lupin franchise, obviously. And that's where this whole style of the series kind of just started off. The TV anime for a woman named Fujiko Mina, that was something that released as the 40th anniversary for the anime for Lupin. This specific movie that is showcased in the art book came out back in 2014, and this art book released in 2017. Just look at that. I 
I love the setting in this movie. It's like European inspired and the visual style of the whole thing, like the color palette, the way the gradients for the shading of the colors, the way that looks is just one of my favorite aesthetics in anime. This movie and the fourth part of the TV series for Lupin, which is the other art book that I have here, both of these just have that type of a style when it comes to their colors and the way everything is shaded and it just looks so good. I love it so much. I highly, highly recommend watching this movie. I just recommend the Lupin series in general. It's so much fun. This is a somewhat darker take on the franchise, but everyone is still the good old same like iconic character. So yeah, I'm speaking about the main characters, of course. Beautiful. So if you are a fan of this movie and this style, you should definitely try to get your hands on this art book while it's still in stock because the stock doesn't seem to be that high for it anymore. So just letting you know. This has 128 pages. more interview stuff. So again, yeah, visually everything comes together so beautifully and the director and the main person behind this interesting reboot of the Lupin series is Koike Takeshi. You may also know him as the main guy behind Red Lion, which is another really aesthetic and crazy cool anime movie. I'm really happy that this interpretation of Lupin exists as an anime. I really feel like they did a great job at selecting keyframes and it does help that this is a movie so it's not as long as the TV series. For example, for like part four, the artwork for that also does more or less the same thing, but it doesn't stand out as much since, you know, you have so many episodes to work with, you have to just cut out a bunch of stuff. Well, with this, since it's a movie, it just makes the selection process a little bit easier and you don't miss out on quite as much stuff. Out of the two art books, this is definitely my favorite one. Simply because, like, just look at this visual aesthetic style again. I can't get enough of it. It's so iconic and beautiful. I love it. I can't. I can't even. In a sense, I would have liked if this art book had even more pages, like twice the amount of pages, because, let's be honest, just a bigger showcase of this style would have been welcomed, but I appreciate these art books as they are. I'm glad that we even have these in the first place. All right. I feel like this is going kind of slow, but you know what? It is what it is. I doubt there are many videos covering art books for Lupin, so I wanted to show these off in depth.
man. I also like drawing occasionally, so I'm definitely going to use this for reference whenever I feel like it. So I'm not sure if I properly went over the fact that this is like the first movie out of uh, two other... There's like three movie sequels to the TV series for a woman named Fujiko Mina. And the sequels are called, let's see, the one that comes immediately after this movie. It's uh, Goemon Ishikawa's Spray of Blood. And the sequel to that, which is somewhat more recent, is Fujiko's Lie. Only this movie got an art book, and I guess I can see why. It was kind of like, in my opinion, the most visually polished overall. Oh boy, there you go. So yeah, the same illustration from the cover. I can't get over how cool Jigen is in general, not only in this movie, this movie kind of like takes it up to another level, but I just love Jigen as a character. I also love Lupin. He is absolutely one of my favorite characters ever. And he's a top as Wando, of course. Okay. We're getting closer to the end. I'm trying to show off different angles, so hopefully the glare doesn't get in the way in every shot, basically. All right. Nice, chill pose. I love this scene so much. We have Zenigata being uh, also hot, of course, the credits. Okay, and of course, this book keeps it classy and it also ends with a bang and a very very awesome shot from the movie so yeah this is an awesome art book i love it this is a just bookmark that came with it and let's go on to the next one and now for the art book for the tv series loop on the third part four the slipcover well it just has the same illustration, and I really, really love this whole crowd shot. This uh, piece right here was drawn by the character designer specifically for this book. You have this kind of classy, fancy kind of look inside, and this was actually the first Lupin series I ever tried out, and man, the love and enjoyment and passion that started in my heart after I just finished this, man, the fact that there is so much great Lupin content out there for me to still watch and enjoy, and there still is new stuff coming out also, it's just kind of mind-blowing, honestly. It's really, really amazing that this franchise, this series, has managed to produce so much stuff, so much great just art and content consistently throughout the generations, and it's all really just good stuff. The fact that these main characters have stood the test of time so beautifully really just speaks volumes for how cool of a franchise this really is. I love the visual aesthetic 
of this whole series. And here you have Lupin with the main side character, I guess, or the main focus new character in this is uh, Rebecca Rosalini. My goodness, I love her so much. She is so much fun. I can't even believe that she's not like one of the main cast characters. She really left an impression. Because again, reminder, this was my first Lupin series, so I didn't know any better that she wouldn't be really part of the other Lupin parts. All right. To this date, this remains one of my favorite anime. Like, God, just, I love everything about it, really. And even, like, on a deeper level, there's, like, a weird sense of nostalgia that I have for this, even if, you know, it wasn't that long ago when I watched it. Well, actually it was, like, what, five years ago? When I was younger, I went on a really memorable vacation in Italy with my family, and I stayed there for quite a while. I managed to really enjoy the culture, the people, the locations. I visited so many places. And this series specifically for Lupin takes place in Italy. I have to say it just does such a good job at capturing the charm of just life in Italy. The setting really has these amazingly detailed backgrounds which are very colorful and I just love how they look and how well they capture the locations. And just seeing places that I actually visited and went to being portrayed so accurately in the anime was just a special feeling. And again, it just gave me this feeling of nostalgia, which is kind of weird. That doesn't really happen when I watch an anime necessarily like, oh my god, I feel nostalgic for that moment in my life. So that's just one of the many things that make me like this um, quite a bit. I have seen most of the modern loop on stuff. And for the older stuff, I'm kind of like putting it away and hoarding it like a treasure since I know for a fact I will just enjoy whatever is thrown at me from Lupin. So yeah, the fact that there are hundreds of episodes of just content for me to explore and specials and movies, it just makes me so happy. And also the manga, like I haven't even touched that at all. Also, rest in peace to Monkey Punch, the original creator for the series. And wait, speaking of the manga for Lupin, did you notice that there's going to be like an Isekai Lupin series in Weekly Shonen Champion? I'm intrigued and I kind of want to read it to see how that's going to work out. Just a Lupin Isekai series. Imagine that. It's actually happening. It's not a joke. God, I do love this art book quite a bit as well. Okay, I said the other one is my favorite out of the two, but this one's also just great. As I mentioned, there are just a lot of things that just inevitably get left out since you can only do so much with 128 pages, and this is quite long with uh, 26 episodes. They had to go through and just select what they felt like was... Uh, a good idea for the art book and the overall tone that they were going for. The character designs are so pretty in this as well. Back to the just aesthetics of the anime. Again, the colors, the way they're done, the gradients, it just... it's something that I wish I would see more in anime, honestly. This is a very specific feel that I feel like I only get from this part of Lupin and let's see, even Jigen's uh, gravestone kind of does also fall in the same category aesthetically with the way the colors are done. Part 5, which I am almost done watching, it goes a slightly different visual direction in my opinion and I did not like it as much as what was happening um, visually in part four. Of course I have my own biases for part four since it just takes place in Italy and 
yeah, that just evokes a lot of nostalgia for me. But just like the overall episodes, the story was, everything was like so excellent and fun. And my God, like the, when the show ends, like the end scene just kind of leaves this empty like void in my heart um, because it's like, wow, I just watched something amazing and I kind of just want to watch it again. It's this interesting kind of like emotion that gets evoked. Like when you finish a show, there's like a specific scene. I'm not going to get into details, but it just really has an impact. And that's how I fell in love with the Lupin series, basically. You have this really just sick action scene done in a very experimental style. My camera doesn't want to necessarily focus on it, but yeah. A bunch of really cool Genga, keyframes, concept art. That's basically mostly just Genga. There you go. This is a really great starting point to watch the Lupin series, in my opinion. If you're someone that hasn't really decided to like dive into the series, which I can see like why a lot of people would consider it intimidating with so much stuff out there, but it's not really that interconnected for the most part. Well, it's not really interconnected basically at all, except for like some stuff that part five uh, kind of plays around with. Well, I guess when I'll watch the older parts, I'll know for sure how fully interconnected things are. But more or less, basically, each entry into the Lupin series, you can kind of consider it a standalone story or just a standalone thing that you can watch. You don't really need to go in chronological order to enjoy the Lupin series. The keyframes that they did select for this are very, very good. I will give them credit for that. Look at this. It's so beautiful. This art book came out in 2016. And let's see. Now that there is actually going to be a part six for Lupin, the TV series, which I'm very excited about, it was recently revealed to that. The first half is going to have like a Sherlock Holmes plot with like mystery and stuff, which is like, wait, uh, yes, I want that combination to happen, actually. And you just have this really interesting uh, selection of writers that are working on it. It's like, yes, I'm very excited. Okay. The main cast of characters from Lupin is so unbelievably iconic. When I was like first watching this specific part, I just couldn't believe how cool everyone was. Lupin is just one of my favorite protagonists in all of anime and manga, like just in general. I love him so much. Fuchiko Mina is just so cool and beautiful and stunning and then you just have Zenigata being a top tier like Husbando. Same with Jigen. Lupin is also a top tier Husbando. It's kind of hard to choose if I'm going to be honest. And you also have Goemon which is like this really like fun character that just pulls off the craziest stuff. Well, this um, video is definitely very scatterbrained, so sorry about that. I'm just trying to show these books off, so we're almost done here.
So yeah, if you want to get some Lupin art books, you can look into these. There aren't really too many options out there. I've seen storyboard books for some of the older stuff, but good luck getting that stuff. It's very out of print. And there are some like, well, at least for this part specifically for part four, there is kind of like a magazine type of art book, which maybe I'll get in the future, which mostly just, I think was meant to be a promotion for the release of the anime. And it seems to just have stuff like key visuals and all that good stuff. I'm having such a good time just looking at these illustrations, to be honest. It's like such a fun reminder of why I love this series so much and why I love this part specifically. All right. We're almost done here. Again, yeah, you have the screenshots with the anime, which doesn't really want to focus. You can see here what I mean when, like, I mentioned this is one of my favorite visual styles ever. Look at that. So pretty. Okay, maybe I'll have to just rewatch this again. This is what I've done to myself. Oh, you can like very faintly see Fujiko. Oh, not to mention, how could I forget to mention this? This series, like the modern interpretation of the series has just one of my favorite voice acting casts ever. The Japanese version, I don't really watch dubs ever. But yeah, like the cast, oh my god, everyone is so good. This also came with a mini bookmark. So I always, ever since I was like a small kid, I've watched anime with subtitles, so dubs aren't really my thing. But if the dub for Lupin is really good, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching the video and bye.